Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my shop. We're gonna do some model making today. Because before I was your friendly neighborhood myth buster, uh, I made a living making models for movies and commercials. And I spent the last five years of my model making career at the Valhalla of industrial light and magic working on the first two Star Wars films, AI, Space Cowboys, and a host of other movies. And I've got here <clears throat> some examples of exactly the kind of model making that was my specialty. Uh, there are sculptors, that is not me. I was what you'd call a hard-edged model maker. And these are three examples of the kind of work that I did. This is a, uh, a lighting fixture uh, that I built as a master for the droid factory sequence from episode two. Uh, I sent this to a mold room. I sent this to our mold room and they made a cat, they made a mold of it and then they made multiple castings and we used those as like arrayed lights around towers for close-up shots as we were doing motion control through the droid factory. This was built as a uh, different scale entirely as like a, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like a maintenance cart on a huge tarmac set for episode two. And then this piece here, I'm quite proud of. This is a vent from the side of the particle accelerator from Terminator 3. Uh, my art director on that gig was Peter Rubin. He drew these out uh, in CAD, but they had no uh, specific detailing. And I was always getting crap from my friend John Goodson uh, because he loved to hand build everything and I love the laser cutter. So except for the honeycomb here, I hand built this to show John that I, I knew what I could do. Um, when I'm doing this kind of model making, there are effectively three main chapters for each model. There's the basic form, then there's the panelization that breaks up that form because nothing in the world is completely monolithic, and then there are the small details, greeblies is what we call them, uh, that add scale and detail and visual interest and help tell the story of the universe that you're in. With those three chapters in mind, I'm gonna start out with the first one. We're gonna basically take a shape. I'm going to cut it out of this polystyrene sheet. You can buy this in different colors. It mostly comes in white and black. This stuff is, um, I think this is uh, 60 thousandths. Uh, and this is like your bread and butter of model making. And you'll get to see why, because it's very easy to work with. The glue that I use is a weld bond, as you'll see. Uh, and it is I mean, I could just build anything with this stuff. I love it so much. It's so versatile. I'm gonna be working mostly with flat planar forms, but this is a thermoplastic, so it can also be thermoformed, vacuum formed, or bent, or heat bent into all sorts of different radical shapes. Almost every Star Wars ship you've ever seen is clad in polystyrene. Uh, so we're gonna start out with a basic shape. I'm gonna just uh, give a little bit of a drawing here. Well, sort of a wing shape and let's, yeah let's do that the other thing about styrene is you don't need to cut all the way through it because it scores and snaps in a magnificent way so your first cut should be light that's just to set the path then you go a little bit heavier now your blade should find that first cut, kind of sink into it. And maybe if you feel like it, you do a third cut just for good measure. And here comes the snapping part. And I'm just gonna do two passes so you can see that it still scores really well and snaps. Uh, this is gonna be our basic shape. I'm going to build uh, a, a, like a topological detail on top of there just for good measure. I think that is gonna be, yeah, great. And I'm gonna do something kind of like this vent here. I'm gonna make it open on one side. Now once you've cut a piece out, you can actually use it as, your, as its own guide for sister pieces that you want to be the same shape. Now I wanna give these a little more visual interest, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of copy this as a form factor and play around. Again, this is all chapter one. We're just making the basic form. Now one of the nice things about styrene and scoring is you don't have to actually go all the way across a piece if you wanna cut out a corner. I'll show you how to do it. So here, 
I just give it a little bit of a bend there and here. I give a little bit, you see it's not broken through here, but I give a little bit of a bend down here. And now I am able to take a corner out. This is also really useful for internal cuts. Now we are going to start to use a little glue. Um, the glue that we use for styrene is called a weld bond. And it is called a weld bond because it is actually welding the plastic together. And by that I mean it is melting the plastic and causing a bond of melted plastic that then dries and makes a very strong part. I don't know the actual chemical that is the weld bond, but I buy it in amounts like this from my local plastics supplier. There we go. I'll keep that over there when I need some more. I'm so excited to introduce you to this technique because it is just, it opens up the whole world for model making. And it, it, the threshold to entry is way lower than you think. That was the first thing I remember thinking when I learned about these techniques. So first and foremost, I'm going to put up uh, one of these uh, as part of, yeah, probably right there. And all I need to do is take a, um, a cheap brush, dip it in the weld bond, and run it along the seam of where the weld bond meets the plastic base. And then, ooh, 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 almost. I got a little impatient. There we go, standing up. Um, it will slowly get more and more uh, robust over the next coming hours, but you can do construction surpassingly quickly. And I mentioned John Goodson was giving me some good natured crap. I've never seen anyone build things faster than John Goodson can build them. It is, it is a feat to behold. Here is the basic form. This is step one. I have a huge panel. It's not that interesting. It needs some visual detail to break it up. And so the, the chapter two of this is after the main form, we do panelization. And let me show you how that works. I'm gonna mark this out and trace it in with a pencil. So that's gonna be my first main panel. Uh, and I want this panel to be inset from the outside edges. Uh, so I am going to inset it probably about an eighth of an inch on each side. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a quarter inch, uh, a quarter inch, uh, what do you call it? Bit of relief on there. And I'm going to use the styrene as my straight edge. Here we go. Again, the first cut is a light cut. Second cut follows the first. Now your blade knows where to go. Third cut is just to make sure that you've applied enough pressure. Uh, normally I like working with slightly thinner styrene than this, but this is totally sufficient uh, for our purposes today. Now I'll put this down and you will be able to see, there we go. I've got a panel that's now inset on all three sides. And what I would like to do is start to break this panel up in the same way that on the side of this vent from Terminator 3, we have this extra visual detail simply by making a panel here that's a little bit visually interesting. That is super important to the scale and to the veracity of this kind of model making. So I am going to start making some drawings on this about where to cut and what to cut. And it's really arbitrary. Uh, so the first part of the paneling, let's, uh, let's do one here and I'll cut uh, there like that. Uh, sometimes when you are trying to cut away a piece of plastic like this and you don't have enough room to grab, just a pair of pliers here works really well. Just give it a little bit of a bend, a little bit of a bend, a little bit of a gentle bend and there it comes. So that one will go there. And same by the same token, give this a bend. You'll feel it, really. It's just the moment you do this once, you'll understand everything you need to know about it. I save everything. All the little bits in the chunky chunks, they're all going to be useful. All right. Um, I'm not doing so bad here. I'm pretty happy with this. I think... Uh, 
think I want to get a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually using the cutting edge of the pliers. Um, makes a fine cut. And it will do that to go there. Now, we're not gluing these down just yet because they're not ready for gluing down. Now, I need to break up the edges of these panels because they're just a little bit too regular. And this is a key part of the Star Wars universe is notching. This is what I'm talking about. That is a notch. This is me cutting out a piece of plastic, looking in that and being like, eh, I think it needs a little more something. Same thing here. That little drop back notch. It just adds a little bit of visual detail, helps your eye see the form a little better and gives your eye like, oh, this was built by people. Literally, it's that kind of detail that we're talking about. So I'm just gonna go through here and mark out where I think some notches should happen. Um, some notches should be across from each other. Most of them shouldn't. In the Star Wars universe, which is a dystopia, um, very few things line up perfectly. In Star Trek universe, all sorts of stuff lines up beautifully, but that's a utopia. Star Wars is a dystopia. So yeah, it's always got to be like, there's a missing spot where there's a rust patch and a bunch of oil that drip down. So I'm just going to go through and make some drawings of notches here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to take this out like that. Yeah. And I'm not making sure, like, I don't have to get, uh, I don't have to get these lines to be perfect. When I cut them out, I'll be able to, uh, to adjust them. And if you look closely at any of the Star Wars ships, you'll notice tons of this kind of detailing going on. Um, notches are just such an important part of the, of the spaceship aesthetic. Um, even back to 2001, uh, the model makers that put together the Ares one and some of those ships were doing this exact kind of work. Uh, it's all over alien. It really is a, uh, a technique that kind of took over. And I mean, for a model maker and an art director, it communicates a lot of scale very quickly. And as I start to cut out these notches, I may end up uh, removing some and not using them, which is totally fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a couple here. Ah, uh, yeah. So what I'm doing now is I'm sort of like, I'm zooming out with my eyes and kind of blurring and sort of seeing where things look a little too regular. If they look a little too regular, I'm gonna break them up. Yeah, that one's good. Oh yeah. Make a deep one there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to start doing some notches. Uh, this is a really, really important technique for this kind of model making, is using your own fingers as a straight edge. And I will do an example on this. If I want a step back of a certain distance here, I may make a reference mark like that. And if I want that reference mark to be perfect all the way along, I don't need a straight edge. I only need to set my finger like this. And I'm using my finger as the straight edge guide. I use this technique a hundred times a week. Um, I can actually, <laughs> I've actually gone out to probably about four or five inches and maintained a pretty darn straight line, plus or minus, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. It is a key technique for getting this, uh, getting these things to look regular. So back to notching. We'll start with this one. I'm going to do two passes for each cut. And do the sides first. And you don't even need to be perfectly regular about the angles. It can all be by eye how much of a step back each notch gets in terms of the angle. Your eye won't really notice if they're slightly irregular. Okay, I've got three notches to pull out of here. So I grab this one with a little bit of uh, pliers and that notch comes out. 
Same thing here. Yeah, that notch comes out. Now I know these aren't pretty, but we're going to make them pretty in just a second. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to make them pretty using the sanding stick. This is a very quick and dirty version, but uh, it really shows, it tells the story. All right, so I've done my first pass at the notching, and now I look over it just to make sure that I feel like it's visually interesting enough. If you get too regular with the notching, again, it draws your eye to it and tells the wrong story. And looking at this, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with it. I am going to use another detail technique, which is hole drilling. So I'm just going to choose a couple of pieces and make myself some guideline. And I'm just going to use a drill and a drill bit. Oop. To drill one and then two holes here. I may not do much more than that, but... I like that. Maybe I'm going to do two up here. Yeah. And again, I'm being judicious about this kind of detailing. If you go too far, it's hard to scale back, but it's easy to keep on going. So I tend to just creep up on it. I tend to creep up on this kind of detailing. All right. That feels pretty good to me. I think I can start to lay these down and I'm gonna get them all kind of close. It's, you very much sort of want them in situ to get this right. And you're gonna be impressed with how easy this part is. I'm just gonna hold down this panel here and I'm gonna paint around its edge with the brush. And for really big panels, you kind of wanna hit it with a uh, needle applicator, but for small paneling, this is plenty. And I'm going to just continue on around, slowly buttoning this down, making sure that these pieces are aligned to each other. And again, I'm putting pressure on with my fingers and letting the weld bond wick in from the edge to create the bond. There you go. That is chapter two, the panelization. Each of these chapters gets more fun, right? The first part of just the form, less interesting. The panelization, more interesting. The next step, which is to add detail to these panels to break their surfaces up, so much fun. Uh, and the first place I see I could add some details, I'm gonna add some cooling fins here at the edge of this, uh, at the edge of this vent, just to make it a little more interesting. I'm going to use some off cuts I have of styrene and I'm going to just cut them all to length using a very specific modeling tool, which I love, which is this. this is a kind of a styrene cleaver and I am just going to, yeah, go. There we go. Now I've got one, two, three or five, I've got five of these parts and I'm gonna just put them in and, uh, oh, one more thing. A pair of tweezers is an excellent, excellent modeling tool and you will uh, be very happy you have a set. All right, it's time for the first half of the greebling. Greeblies are just little tiny details. This is a term George Lucas came up with decades ago, I believe. Uh, and there are two kinds of greeblies. One are flat styrene greeblies, and I've got an assortment right here that you can see. Doesn't even matter, some are big, some are small, they are all different sizes, you'll see how they go. Uh, and then the second pass, is actually using model pieces, bits of real plastic models. But that's the most fun part, and it's the last. Uh, sorry, the last part of the physical model making. How these go on is one of my favorite things in modeling. First, get yourself a new and very sharp uh, 
X-Acto blade or scalpel blade. Then make sure you've got enough weld bond in your little pallet. And then I will be literally picking up a piece of styrene just by touching it with the X-Acto blade, touching it into the glue and then placing it somewhere where it's visually interesting. Actually, I waited too long to do that, so let's get a little more glue on there, and we'll put it right there. Now, you can buy strip styrene of every thickness. Uh, it's made by a company called Evergreen, and that is usually how I do this, but you don't need to. I simply am using all the offcuts of all the long strips I cut out between these panels, and I'm just gonna slowly go in and each time I think that there's a place that I could use a little bit of visual interest, hold down for a second and pick it up and it's already there. Take another piece. Looks like I could use another one right next to it and I'll put that one right there. Pick it up. And there you get to see just how much more detail that adds to your eye. Again, don't go too far. You want to just keep on assessing where could it use a little more visual interest. Maybe right there. This is very much a Bob Ross, you got to go at your own pace, do your own sort of thing with this. Uh, got a big one here, I want to break up this panel here. So I'm just going to go right to there, right to the middle. Yes! Then I'm going to take a small one. And I'm bouncing all over the place on this. You don't want to get too regular. You don't want to, human beings are terrible at randomness. So you really want to sort of use a technique that helps you achieve some randomness because if it's too regular, again, it draws your eye and it tells the wrong kind of story. Each panel should get a little bit of something, something, but they don't all have to. And again, I am actually working on a fairly big scale with this. I have worked on an exceedingly tiny scale, done all this amount of detailing in a piece only this big. It really depends on what the restrictions and needs of the shot are. When we made the space shuttle for Space Cowboys, the level of detail had to be intense because there was only one model for every single shot. Sometimes in a big budget movie, you'll be able to make a big scale model for close-up shots to get all that extra detail but sometimes you'll have to put it all in the same model. Okay, I'm satisfied with the first pass of styrene greebling, and I hope you can see how much more visible this piece is now and how much more story it communicates across, both from shadow details, panels being broken up, your eye not being drawn to anything specific, but it feeling like a very industrial, spaceshipy kind of thing. I swear these rules even apply if you're building something like a garbage truck. You just don't want too many wide open expanses. Your eye needs visual detail. The world is very rarely monolithic. And now we are about to get to my favorite part of this detailing process and kind of why I'm a model maker. Uh, and that is, we're gonna add one more pass of detail, but now we're going to use model kits. And specifically, uh, military model kits. This, I think, is part of a Tamiya kit. Uh, Tamiya and Hasegawa make my favorite castings. They're very crisp, even up close. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be going through several model trees, looking for parts that I like for this and I'm going to be making a little collection. And the same way I did all these little styrene pieces, I'm gonna gather up all of those greeblies on this palette, and I'm gonna slowly use the knife to apply them in the same way. Yeah, square panels are always good. All right, now, before I go on and do this last pass of detailing, uh, the glue has had a bit of a chance to set, and I want to help tie this together. This is where I usually take a scotch pad, uh, and I just go in and I, I just soften the whole thing up. This helps take care of 
burrs and other things. And I will thank me later for having done this, this sort of ties it all together. And really, this is only 10 minutes after I glued these down, so it is a marker of just how robust gluing things together with this method can be. All right. Here we go. Oh, this is so much the best part. Get a little more glue in here. Whoops. Um, so now the question is, where do these things all go? So I've got some repeating parts here that I like, and I think I may want to have them sort of be facing each other there, but not there. Maybe here. That's one of the great things that model kits are wonderful for is the repeating parts aspect. Um, I can add in some details. I can even glue onto the side and it'll stay. That one could go here. Yes, yes. Oh wait, yeah, there it goes. I move them around until I know it's right. How do I know it's right? Institutional knowledge. It's literally just practice. Yeah, there, that one goes there, so. You'll always end up with some extra pieces here. There's no need to go too far. I am, I'm really pretty pleased with that. Now, we are about to tie this all together because a primer pass is how you really get to see just how well it's gone. I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of a nerny there. Uh, and by that, I mean, I'm going to hit this with gray primer and you're going to get to see the whole thing sink. Well, there you go. There's the primer pass. I love the primer pass so much. It's because where all my hard work feels like it comes to fruition. All of a sudden, this bin full of disparate pieces and parts and little nernies of styrene gather together to tell a cohesive story. And having done this for film for so many years, I still get just as excited about doing it today as I did the first time I sat down to a model making table in the early 90s. Now what I've covered in this video is simply the physical construction of this kind of modeling. And I, I hope I've made it clear just how low the threshold to entry is, how much fun it is, and how much reward you get. Uh, this is something you've just got to practice at. So grab some styrene, grab some model kits, they are cheap on Craigslist, and start making your own. You'll really catch the hang of it very quickly. Uh, for my money, the next step with this would be to add a base color. Usually in Star Wars, it's a, a, a medium reefer white. Then I would add in the weathering detail to make these details pop. Then there'd be rust streaks, blaster hits, uh, specular highlighting, which is glosses and semi-glosses for adding even more detail that may only show up at certain camera angles. Oh, so much fun. But I will tell you, I had just as much fun doing this over the last couple of hours as I did 30 years ago when I first started this kind of work. If you'd like to see this build even more up close, we also filmed it in virtual reality as part of our Tested VR series. You can watch it right now either on the Tested VR app or on MetaQuest TV. Links and details are in the description below. Thanks for watching.